All right, what's up guys? Nighthawk here. Happy in seven day to all. Um, so, not really much of a video guy, so I don't have any kind of fancy previews or flashy graphics to continue hyping up the mod that I've been hyping up for the past six months, but I thought you guys deserved at least a little bit of a sneak peek of what I've currently been wor uh, working on. So, I'm going to be jumping around to a whole bunch of different saves, because I've got um, powers stored on different characters depending on, you know, their class and what I need to test at the time. So, let me just uh, hop in and start popping back and forth between characters and showing you what I've got. Alright, so first I'm going to be hopping into Eden Prime here. I'm going to put myself in god mode so I don't have to worry about dying. Alright, so on this character I've got a few things going. So I've got Incinerate and Cryoblast. You can see I haven't finalized the, the string refs that I need to actually like give you a description of what those are for those powers yet. However, they are fully functional. So if I just wander over to this Geth here and uh, use a little bit of Incinerate. There we go. So you can see that Incinerate works uh, very similar to how Warp does in LE1. So you just uh, hit it, it'll launch um, your Incinerate projectile. And I'm using the VFX here from like what happens when you hit somebody with a high explosive shot. I thought it looked really cool. Um, one thing you will notice uh, that I actually managed to do with these powers is that that was now a projectile. So normally in LE1, um, whatever powers you have, whether they're like a tech mine or whether they're biotics, will just basically hit instantly, like whatever you're pointing at. Um, I changed it to be like the other games, so when Shepard launches a power, it's going to appear as a projectile that can actually home in on its target. Alright, so here we've got a Geth Trooper without shields, um, and that's going to be very important. So, I'm going to launch Cryoblast here. Oh, then he died. Okay. Well, I can show you how Cryoblast uh, works a little bit later. I've got another character that has it, um, and I'll use it with enemies that aren't quite as squishy as that Geth was. Okay, so over here on the left, you're also going to notice that I've got what appears to be the uh, Inferno Grenade icon over on Ashley's side, and indeed that is what it, uh, what that is. So let me just wander back down into here. Alright, here you go. You guys all are. Alright Ashley, let's throw an Inferno Grenade. There it is! Okay, um, and again, I'll show you a little bit later um, the what happens when Shepard throws the Inferno Grenade, but here you can see um, the grenade basically just came in and insta-hit, kind of like it in the, in the other games that um, killed these two Geth. Um, there are projectiles that will shoot out over it, again I'll show you that a little bit later, um, but they all kind of detonated in one place since uh, she kind of threw it in the corner here. Um, let's see here. So I've got Incinerate, Cryoblast, and Inferno Grenade. Alright. Let's see if uh, Incinerate's coming off cool down here. While we're waiting on that, uh, I want to show you one thing. So I updated the uh, Overload VFX to be kind of more in line with the other games, kind of the, the more blue color that's happening here as opposed to the more white color that happens in LE1. You also notice that when I did this, um, much like in the other games, it insta-hit as opposed to launching a proximity mine. So that's what I'm doing with all the tech powers now is I will... It still launches a mine technically, but the mine is invisible and will explode automatically. So it kind of mimics um, what's going on in the other games when you cast any kind of tech power. Y'all will stop blowing stuff up. So, I also have the Sabotage here. And you'll notice that Sabotage appears to have the icon for AI hacking. 
kind of like an LE3, there's a reason for that. So, now if you do sabotage and you do it on any kind of robotic enemy like a Geth, instead of uh, jamming their weapon, it will hack them. It will still jam weapons of uh, any organic enemy, um, or anybody you're actually not aiming at will have their F weapons jammed, but when you target a Geth, the Geth itself will become hacked. Or a drone, whatever, uh, whatever kind of synthetic enemy you're, you're fighting here. Um, so I kind of joined together the AI hacking and sabotage powers, similar to how it works in LE3. Uh, the one thing to note about this is that if you hit several Geth, um, in kind of the same area, only the one that you are targeting will become hacked. The rest of them will have the normal sabotage effect of sabotaging their weapons. Um, and the reason for that is LE1 kind of breaks if you have more than one enemy that's hacked in the same level. They'll basically, their AI just dies and they'll just kind of sit and stare at you and won't really do anything. So I had to limit it down to only hacking the one, uh, the one enemy. All right. So, I'm going to hop over here for a second and show you a different character I've got going. Uh, so here, this character is a Sentinel. And you'll be seeing Shargila a lot. That's kind of my, uh, my testing ground here. So, I am going to zoom my way over to this bandit hideout in the area. And, oh, what's this, tech armor? And you'll see I actually did write a description for this one. Um, so yes, I have ported tech armor into LE1, and it works very similar to the other games, so if I cast it... Uh, you'll note that it has the similar VFX from LE2 and LE3. Um, it's not exactly the same, it kind of has, has a distinctive LE1 flair, and the reason for that is I can't really port materials across games, so I basically have to work with whatever's in the game itself. So, in this case, the tech armor is basically just using the Omni Tool material, and the armor underlay there is, um, basically it's the same VFX that happens when you use, um, the, uh, what is it called, the immunity power. Um, except for it doesn't have any of the, like, the white stuff that you usually see in the immunity power. So, um, I didn't enable god mode here, and there's a reason for that, so if I let these guys take my shields down, come on guys, you can do it. Come on, keep shooting. There you go, okay. Okay, so you may have noticed that my armor just broke and exploded. So yes, I have ported that ability into Ellie, what is there for the tech armor. If your shields drop, um, your armor will explode. Um, the VFX is kind of a little uh, extra, because this is basically what I had to do in LE1. This is the VFX that happens when Saren uses that like clearing attack right before the cutscene on Vermeer, and that's the kind of the VFX that I was able to use for this, so that's what you get when your, uh, your armor goes down. Alright, so I'm gonna hop into the pause menu here and turn on god mode so I don't immediately die. There we go. Okay. So let's take a closer look at these projectiles since I'm kind of out in the open here. Alright, so we have this big open space so I can properly show you how things are working. So if I just... Come on, Turian. Don't be scared. Okay, he's just gonna keep fucking up, so let me deal with this Krogan here. Okay, so you'll note um, in the original game you kind of have to be aiming at and locked onto a specific target for a biotic attack to kind of instant hit. Here, um, what I've done is I'm emulating the biotic powers from other games, so if I use throw, first off you'll see that throw is now an actual projectile, like I said before, that Shepard actually did throw here. And you'll also notice that I aimed it kind of to the left of the Krogan here, but it now homes in and will hit him, similar to how the projectiles work in LE2 and LE3. So you can still arc projectiles around, hit enemies behind cover, 
And actually, this also works for any kind of destructible objects um, in the world as well. So any kind of, like, uh, explosive canister or anything like that, um, you just have to be able to lock onto it, basically. And it has to do, like, some kind of negative effect in the world in order for the projectile to arc, hit it, and actually explode it. All right. Now that I'm in an area where the enemies are not as squishy as those geth that were on Eden Prime, um, I can kind of show you Cryoblast uh, properly here. So um, what I'm actually going to do here is I am going to, if you'll give me one second here, make sure I've got the right command down. Uh, let's see here. Yes, okay. So I can actually disable all power cooldowns by doing enable power cooldown false. And basically this should allow me to use any of the powers without having to worry about a cooldown here. And I'm doing this so I can demonstrate what happens if you shoot Cryoblast at this enemy where his shields are still up. So as y'all know in LE1, Shields don't really matter. I mean, they matter, they keep you from killing the enemy, but biotics can penetrate them, tech can penetrate them. It's not the same as LE2 and LE3 where you have to lower the shields um, of your enemy before you attack them. I have kept that in place, but for one power, and that's Cryoblast. And the reason for that is it would be kind of OP if I gave you a stasis-like power that you could just use whenever, all the time, and still be able to shoot him. Um, so instead, what happens if I shoot him, you'll note, he's still capable of moving and, all right, he's still capable of acting, so he's still shooting me here. However, he can't move, so he's kind of rooted to the spot right now. Um, so if you have enemies charging at you, cryoblast while their shields are up will just stick them in place. So you'll be able to back up and deal with them without having them come at you and try to rifle butt you in the face. They'll still be able to shoot you, however. So in order to actually do the cryoblast effect uh, the right way, you have to lower his shields, and he should shield boost here, yes. So let me take his shields down again, and then we'll freeze them again. There we go. Alright. Alright, sniper, that was rude. There we go. Okay, so you can see that I used the uh, kind of cryo effect, um, the effects that was already in LE1 for what happens when you hit an enemy with cryo blast where his shields are down, and this actually does freeze him. So this is effectively like stasis, except for you can still freely shoot him, and damage him. So there's one other cool thing that can happen if you combine cryo blast with warp or with incinerate. So similar to how like you can detonate power combos in LE3 and a little bit in LE2, um, here what, I've, uh, what you can do is if I cast warp here, you'll see I just did a whole bunch of, ch I just did a chunk of damage all at once um, as opposed to warp's usual like damage over time. So if you freeze an enemy, hit him with warp or with incinerate, it will do a chunk of damage all at once instead of just ticking down his health like usual. All right, let's see here. So you'll notice down in my hotbar here, I've got, once again, I've got my sabotage here. Um, this probably isn't gonna be a power on the Sentinels um, when I eventually release this mod, but you can see this here. Um, this is kind of an artifact. This icon doesn't actually do anything. I've showed you Cryoblast, I've showed you Throw, Warp, Tech Armor. So what's this down here? This is actually a power I'm planning on giving Garrus. So this is basically his proximity mine power from LE3. Um, there's not really much to say about it. It acts kind of like a grenade. So if I go over here, use it here. You'll see basically that it's, it's like a proximity mine grenade. So it just detonates, it takes off a chunk of his health. Um, I basically just gave this power um, to give Garrus kind of some direct damage in his abilities. So you can like booby trap door frames um, if you're fighting indoors and you don't have to worry about like remotely detonating a grenade or anything. So 
that's basically just proximity mine. Not really much to say about that. I know that's not really all that you were here for. You were here for uh, tech armor and the stuff I'm going to show you next. So let's see tech armor one more time. You might have also heard that I've actually managed to bring in some of the sound effects from LA2 and LA3. That is possible thanks to InGamers and uh, Kinkajiro putting in an absurd amount of masochism to allow audio editing in LE1. So I was actually able to port in um, some of the sound effects that you hear for the powers in the other games to kind of give it that kind of authenticity in addition to their icons and kind of their VFX. Okay, so let me hop over to a different save here. So we'll go back to my original character and I'll go from the very start of the game to the very end of the game. So what I want to, what I want to show you here now that we're in the Citadel, is, uh, you'll notice Tally is here. There's a reason for that. So here, you may notice looking down and looking over to the right that I've got a couple of new icons here. Um, so here, this is probably my pride and joy. This is the thing that I spent probably the most time on designing. A lot of the powers I was actually able to port over without, like, uh, a, a lot of effort, really. I was able to port over even like stuff like Biotic Charge, which I'll show you a little bit later. I was able to port over without much difficulty. Combat Drone, I basically had to design from the ground up. So let me show you what these drones look like. So I'll just come out here and I'll fire off Shepard's Drone. All right, so right away you saw it kind of spawn in with some VFX. That VFX was, is actually borrowed from um, Vigil on Ilos, and I just added in like some of the combat drones, uh, like static meshes and stuff to make it to kind of give it that effect when it pops into existence. So here you'll see that Shepard's drone is orange, uh, kind of like it is in LE2 and LE3. This drone color, this outer shell color, will actually change depending on what the actual rank of the drone is. So the way I've got it set up now is if for Shepard. If the drone is kind of a pale orange color, that's kind of your default drone. It just kind of does the little zappy attack that we're all familiar with from LE2. If the drone is a blue color, it can fire off a rocket, similar to the attack that you can see in LE3. And I should be able to demonstrate that when I get up there and get into combat uh, with the guests that are up there. Um, and then the, lastly, the darker orange color means um, if an enemy kills this drone, it will explode in their face. Uh, so this is Shepard's drone. Uh, Tally, would you be so kind to cast yours as well? There it is. Alright, so this is Tally's drone, and you may notice that this is basically Chatika Boss Paws. Um, so when Tally ca casts the drone, it's a slightly different color from Shepard's. So Shepard has the standard kind of orange drone. Tally's drone is her usual kind of pinkish purple uh, Chatika. And here you can see that Tally's drone is the rocket variant, so it has that kind of blue outer shell color. For her, um, the colors are similar to Shepard, so when uh, it's just the standard drone, it's kind of a pale pinkish purplish color. When it's explosive, it's the darker um, pinkish purplish, but when it's the in the rocket form, it is this kind of blue color. Okay, so also down here you'll note this icon. This is basically just a this is just swapping for immunity. So I'm basically just going to rename immunity to fortification so it's similar to the other games, but there's not a lot of changes that are going to happen there. It's more just kind of like smoothing out the lore between games than anything else. Um, so not much to worry about here. Um, so what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to reload this save. And the reason for that is I'm going to charge up there to where the geth are and I want to make sure that Tally has her drone ready uh, to use. So I'm gonna enter God mode once again to ensure I don't die. And I'm gonna charge up there. Take cover! Alright. Alright, so you'll notice something just happened there. So Tally will cast the combat drone just on her own. Um, I don't know why, but I'm very happy about that. So um, Something in her AI basically says that it's cool to cast the drone um, in situations like this. This is like the first thing she did. So she fired off this power and the drone is now here. So let's check out what this drone is doing. Alright, so you can see there that it used its little shocky attack and these geth are now on the floor. 
Um, so one very curious thing about LE1 is, so you know in the other games, whenever you like hit an enemy, they kind of stagger back. When the drone zaps them, they kind of stagger, they're kind of stunned for a minute. LE1 doesn't do stagger for whatever reason. There's no animation for it, there's no real logic for it. Instead, it's just basically you're either fine or you're ragdolled. So when the combat drone shocks the Geth, as you can see here, it knocks them down for a minute. There it is again. They tried to stand back up, that was a mistake, so the drone shocked them once again. Alright, so you can see there, um, the enemies actually killed the drone, so that's what happens when the drone dies. Um, it kind of breaks apart like that. Alright, so let Shepard cast his own drone. Let's see what we can do here. Alright. So the drone is actually pretty smart. Um, so when you first cast it, uh, what it's going to think about is it's going to find the closest enemy to it and it's just going to charge right at that enemy and try to uh, kind of harass and harry him and probably zap him here. There it is, yep. So it's going to zap him here. Come on, drone buddy. I kind of want to show off his rocket here. Let's see if I can get him to fire a rocket. Drone kind of does whatever he wants, so... Okay, so you can see the VFX there, that was the drone despawning, so if I just wait a second... Oh, or Tally's got me, there we go. Thank you, Tally. Alright, do I have any other enemies around? Perimeter secure. Ah, oh, damn it, okay. Well, there is one way I can show you this. Alright, so I'm gonna pop into a different character, I'm gonna hop onto the moon. Alright, so this is also going to be able to uh, allow me to show you the different drone colors. So, once again, I'm going to shut down power cooldowns here. Um, so, if I shoot the uh, combat drone right now, it should be the pretty standard combat drone. There we go. So you can see it's kind of a more of a paler orange color. So it's just the standard combat drone. Um, all it can do is zap. Um, so you'll see over here on the left, this is what happens to the combat drone when there's nobody else in your party. And the reason for that is this combat drone technically is a party member. So it's it's part of your squad, it's going to attack the enemies, it's going to view you guys as allies. If there's nobody in your party, um, the way I have it right now, you can actually control the combat drone's actions like any other party member. So if I just do this, there you can see the combat drone zap attack. Alright. So, let's see here. Uh, sorry little buddy. There we go. So I killed him there. Uh, now let me upgrade him a little bit. Um, so you'll see kind of some placeholder stuff here in this menu. Um, you can see I did write a description for the combat drone here and this does work currently. Um, but it is a little jank currently, I kind of have to iron it out so you'll see something weird here. So this is the rocket combat drone. Alright. Alright, so you can see here, now the combat drone has its blue shell. Um, and you'll notice on the left it now has two different powers. So now if I can control it... There it is! Alright, let me hop into photo mode a bit so I can give you guys a closer look. Alright, so we got the combat drone here. Uh, and it just fired this projectile out. So, this is the rocket that it's going to use to, um, to hit enemies. It has VFX very similar to Incinerate that you saw before. Um, so if an enemy is very far away, the combat drone will probably shoot a rocket at it instead of trying to charge and zap it. Um, so let me see here if I go ahead and kill this guy again. Uh, and you'll notice the VFX was a little weird there. Um, that's another thing I kind of need to iron out. Some sounds were missing, some placeholder stuff. Uh, so let me go into my menu here. And we'll just upgrade him until he's max. Alright. There we go. Alright, so now you can kind of see he was the darker color that you saw before. And now, uh, let's see, if I were to kill him... Okay. Hello? There it is. Okay, so this is what happens when the combat drone gets killed. He sends out this giant shock attack. 
um, that will damage any enemies in the, in the vicinity um, of his location if they actually do manage to kill him. Probably should have given a little bit of an epilepsy warning there, so again, I kind of bar borrowed some VFX from Vigil, so there is kind of some flashy lights there. I do apologize for that. All right. But while I'm here, and before I move on, you'll also notice down in my bar that I have a button for Tactical Cloak. So this is another thing I was able to port over into LE1, so if I click here... Alright, so you'll note that Shepard now um, is basically completely invisible. So let me get out photo mode here. So, um, LE1 doesn't really have the material that you would see in LE2 or LE3 when the tactical cloak is, so there's no like shimmery effect or anything like him. Instead, what I basically did here is when you cast tactical cloak, um, all the materials in Shepard and in any weapons that he or she is holding uh, basically get assigned the material for their visor. So he's completely translucent, and enemies should basically completely ignore him until he fires his weapon, casts the power, um, or the timer runs out on the cloak. There. So you see there, and up here, you'll notice that the cooldown didn't start until after the cloak bro uh, broke. So I preserved that from the other games. If the cloak is on, um, your cooldown for tactical cloak is paused. You can still use any other power um, with the condition that it will break the cloak. Um, however, you won't be able to use tactical cloak again until this cooldown runs out after your current cloak breaks. Okay, so we saw the combat drone. We saw tech armor. We saw incinerate, cryoblast. We saw what I did to some of the bionic powers. Uh, let's see here. Oh yes, I'm sure you're all curious about what I did with Biotic Charge. Since you all seem to be super excited about that, let's hop in and see what that's about. Alright. So once again, I'm back here on Chargila with a different character. Uh, so you'll note that this character only has a shotgun and a pistol attached, so he's basically going to be my little vanguard buddy who's going to help me demonstrate some stuff. But before I get to the part that you're all waiting for, I kind of want to give you a closer look at the Inferno Grenade power that I showed you with Ashley back on Eden Prime. So when Ashley launched the power, it basically directly detonated, it kind of killed the Geth around here. If you take it as a bonus power for Shepard at the start of the game, so any of these extra powers that I'm adding will be bonus powers that you can take at the beginning of the game, similar to any other powers that are in LE1. If you do Inferno Grenade, you'll note that Shepard throws the canister, very much like what happens in LE2 um, if you take Inferno Grenade as a bonus power after completing Zayid's uh, loyalty mission. Uh, so. I basically designed this canister here. What's happening here is this actually is a grenade. Um, the actual grenade part, however, is invisible. And instead, all you see is the canister and the little uh, kind of projectile effect thing that's going on here. So when this hits... So you saw there, when it impacted there, um, it will explode in place and launch out the child projectiles, just like that. And it kind of has the sound effect to go along with it. All right. So let me hop over to the little hideout these bandits are coming out here. With apologies for the travel time, I had to get far enough away to be able to uh, actually load a save. Shotgun equipped, that's good, because I'm about to get shotgunned. Alright, so again, I haven't really wrote a description for Bionic Charge yet. However, it does work, so let's go. Bam! Alright, so there you kind of saw um, you can charge in, just like the other games. You'll impact him just like that. I've kind of brought over some of the sound effects. And uh, actually what happened there, you'll note, is when I hit him, it acted kind of like if you were to hit him with, like, you know, 
throw or one of LE1's powers where, you know, again, he gets ragdolized instead of staggered. Um, so when that happens, you also note that my cam word was pointed slightly downwards, and the reason for that is I've given you with just a tiny bit of aim assist, because there's a little brief moment after charge where you won't have complete control over Shepard, so I grabbed the camera and forced it onto the enemy so you'll be able to actually still target whoever you were looking at, and you don't suddenly lose track of him because he's now on the floor uh, somewhere else. Alright, so that was charge. So, I also ported over Shockwave. You'll note it looks and behaves exactly like the shockwave from the other games. It, um, the number of shockwaves and kind of the duration of the power and how big the shockwaves are depends on um, what your current uh, talent rank is for the shockwave attack. You'll also notice that the guy that I originally shockwaved appears to be gone. Well, he's not gone. Oh, there he is. There we go. All right, so yeah, so if you upgrade shockwave... Uh, to its maximum extent, you can just throw enemies around uh, crazily like ragdolls, which is especially hilarious when you're outdoors and kind of can throw him into outer space, because LE1 Biotics are awesome. Okay. Oh, he survived. Alright, so let's take a look at another power, Lift, which I'm, I'm probably going to end up renaming Pull, but it's basically still going to be the same as Lift. Um, but again, this is also a projectile like the other powers, so you can see um, the animation is the same, but it launches out a projectile towards the city and grabs him. There we go. Alright. And Singularity is also the same. There we go. Alright, you may have noticed the, uh, the concussion, uh, concussive shot icon that was down on my little board down there so this has also been ported the sound effects aren't exactly the same as the other games because there's a lot of like very strange uh like wise on the fly audio editing that happens whenever you cast concussive shot into le2 and le3 um so i've had to be able to emulate some of the stuff for le1 using audacity and i haven't completely worked out the stuff for concussive shot yet but concussive shot does work uh as intended so there we go. So, you fire it out of whatever weapon you happen to be holding. Uh, it will impact and ragdollize whoever you're shooting it at. Um, similar to... Throw. Alright. Uh, let's see here. Let's just hit him with an inferno grenade. Just to be mean. There we go. Alright. He'll be fine, don't worry. Uh, Alright, so... You know what, let's see charge one more time. Why not? Wow, she really couldn't take a hit. Alright. So. Let me show you a little of what happens with Cloak when you actually have enemies around. So I showed you what it looks like when there aren't any enemies around. So I've got enemies here. So let me just Cloak a little. So they know somebody's here because I opened the door. However... They have no idea where I am. So, when you have cloak equipped, you can move about freely. Enemies won't target you. They won't be able to see you until you do something to decloak. Like sucker shot that guy in the back of the noggin. Alright, let's just concuss a blast this guy. Yeah, why not? Uh, let's see here. Let's get you a singularity. Oh, I missed. Oh well. Oh, actually, that does give me an idea. So let's see if I actually can. Let me, uh, let me lift one of these guys here. Let me, uh, lift you. Thank you. Eh, not quite. Uh, alright. Uh, so... Let me just, uh, fool around for a little bit. Uh, may edit this part out. And wait until I get Singularity off cooldown. And then I'll show you a cool thing that can happen with charge in LE1. There it is. Alright. So let me see if I can get her to stand still. Or you will also do. Come on, dude. Get Singularity. Okay. So, um, whenever Singularity or Lift 
fist is used on an enemy and you use charge, you can still hit them when they're in the air. Uh, so I can imagine y'all could have a lot of fun with this uh, ability. So if you have Liara or you take Singularity as a bonus power as a vanguard, you can throw Singularity into a group of enemies and you'll able, be able to charge any one of them that are currently hovering in the air. Um, I don't believe this is anything you can do in any of the other games. Um, I could make it so you can't do this, but I'm not going to because it's fun and fucking hilarious. Okay, uh, one last thing about charge, uh, similar to the other games, so let me just uh, probably also edit this part out. I'll uh, get uh, charge up the ground here. Okay, so if you're ever in a situation where you may be able to target an enemy, you may not be looking at anything in particular, and you try to charge, um, this effect will play around Shepard, and you'll kind of hear the, um, sorry, I can't really do it noise coming from uh, your HUD here, and your power won't go on cooldown. So charge can only be um, actually activated, and it will only fire if you've got a clear line of sight to whoever you're trying to charge. So if I come over and flank her here, there we go, just like that, okay. Alright, so I've kind of shown you guys a little bit of everything that I've been working on here. Um, if you have any recommendations, suggestions, I'm always hanging around the uh, community discord that we've got going here. Um, so with that, uh, Happy in seven day, and uh, I'll let you know when I'm actually finished with this project and I can get it released.